Greetings Tubiverse, I am one noob noob, and in this video, we're going to cover base skins and top war. Base skins are not exclusive to pay to play players. I've picked up a number of them for free in events myself personally, so I'm not making this stuff up. So please don't let people tell you that they're just something for whales to grab, okay? You're going to miss some good stuff. I'm going to cover strategy and options for all types of players here. I love base skins. But, this is important, at a certain point they cross the line and they become overly costly versus their impact. And I'd recommend when that happens, and I'm going to try to tell you when that happens, I recommend switching at that point to buying decor bundles for all but the most competitive of players that are scratching and clawing to try to get to that next 10% bump in stats. Base skins can make a huge difference in game, and they come in a lot of different flavors, okay? Also, there are some special limited event time offers. So when there's a special event, please make sure you take a few minutes to look over what you can get in that event because it's not going to come around too many times or very often. If you see a specific skin or a box where you can pick from a number of skins, this video should help you figure out if you want to push hard to get one of those skins that you see or if you should maybe focus on something else. As a shameless plug, I have a video on the order of importance to pick items in gem and vit events that'll help you out in making these decisions. And also check out the comments. I continue to be really impressed and grateful for all the thoughtful comments from so many of you trying to help other players out. So give them a read, okay? The comments are not gonna bite you. I mean, I've, I've, I've read them myself. I never got bitten, it's fine. Uh, don't be scared, just give them a read. You might like it. For free-to-play players specifically, I highly recommend prioritizing VIT modifying skins first. Some skins can increase your VIT recovery speed and others will increase the overall VIT that you have. These skin types most benefit free players and players that only occasionally spend small amounts of money in game. Now, I know that some eyebrows just raised on this from your regular spenders out there. I, I heard it, I heard it, I saw it. But please just hear me out for a second, okay? I have a pretty good justification for this. Free-to-play players and occasional small spenders, they don't have the same access to other things that generate more VIT and faster recovery speed that regular spenders take for granted, like the effect of your VIP level. Also, they have to rely more heavily on gem and VIT-based events in order to bulk up their accounts. So these are a pretty big deal under these circumstances. Listen, we're not all level 16 VIPs in this game that have spent tens of thousands of dollars in game. Having more VIT also means more opportunities to grab gems in some cases, like radar events for example. Many players are not ever going to buy a base skin in game. Try to think about it that way and I think you'll agree with me. If, after you thought about it, you're like, eh, now, please let me know in the comments below and let's talk it out. I built this channel to help people get stronger in game and, of course, smush their enemies. Um, I think a lot of you feel the same way that I do and I love you for that based on the comments that I read. So with that said, in the VIT category of skins, Neotopia is a skin that I've seen available in free and event boxes a lot more than once. Holding this item in stock is going to get all units plus 10 increase in attack, plus 10 bonus, and 20% faster VIT recovery, which is pretty nice. Now, I know some of you are going to look at it and you're going to think, hey, this is only good for airport, Air Force, okay? But it's useful to hold in stock regardless, and if this is the only skin that you're able to have, you're still going to get 30% attack bonus when hitting another player, regardless of what unit you use. Also, Home Sweet Home is one I've seen in VIT-based skin boxes, and that'll increase your VIT recovery by 5%. Now, one final skin I'd like to mention is the ZH2 Conqueror. Holding this skin in stock is going to get you 10% attack, another 10% HP, and it'll give you an extra 20 VIT to play with. The last skin there, the ZH2 Conqueror, I've seen it most frequently in boxes that require a small amount of spending. And yes, you, you can actually get base skins during special events for a lot less than what you do uh, in the other like every 30 day things that, that, that happen, okay? Like talking 30 to 40 bucks versus 140 to 150, pretty big difference, okay? So don't discredit that. So in these skins, talking about these, you can get a pretty solid boost to your VIP and use that to build on getting items and gem and VIT based events, getting stronger in game over time with each and every one of those events. So now that we've covered that, I'd like to change our thought process here and talk about our primary skin, which is a very big deal. New skins seem to be released about every month or so. Some are garbage, others are amazing. Some have special skills, some don't. I kind of dig the special skills, I'm gonna get into that. 
So overall, if you have solid VIT production, you should think next about the best primary skin you should have. A solid combat skin can make an impressive difference in your game plan. Uh, so be on the lookout for a skin that's great for your march. And in my case, the primary battle skin that I use right now is Bear of Hearts. It's pretty good. Isn't it really pretty? Yeah. Being army, you can see the great stats that, that I have when I have it enabled as my primary skin. To get the effects of any attack skin on your march, you only need to enable it right before you send out your troops. And, and I like to keep it on until I hit my targets just to be safe as an FYI. I don't know if it's superstition or whatever, but do it. You'll feel better. Thanks to the holograph feature in Top War, you can set the look you want and keep it regardless of whatever skin you happen to have active at the time. Just select the holography button, I think that's how you say that, and change to the image you want everybody to always see. It's pretty cool. I think this is a great feature to that the developers added. Thank you for that. And I really don't want to hang out in the Barrel Heart skin, don't get me wrong. It's just not my flavor. I love the Blade Runner vibe of the Neotopia skin, so I'm typically rocking that image. The next skin you should keep your eye out for is the Super Miner skin. Everybody's talking about it. Unless you plan on just buying the food and oil you need to advance in game, which is a fair strategy used by regular pay players, the Super Miner skin will turbocharge your collection of resources. You're going to get a 50% gather and load increase. That's crazy enough. But on top of that, as you're building and researching, you're also getting 20% gold production. That's really lovely icing on the cake. In order to get the benefits of this skin on your march, to, uh, you're going to put it on, go to your resource tile, go to your resource tile, okay? Once you land there, you can take it off. You don't have to mess with it again until it's time for you to bring your march back in. When it's time to bring your march back in, put the skin back on again, let your folks return home at that point in time, and once they're home, you're done. You can, you can switch off to something else, okay? The Super Minder, it's a game changer for most players, and I, I really like that skin. After the super miner, you should look at bases that have useful skills, okay? So skins with skills are good. One I love to highlight, it's not number one, okay? But the one, one of the ones I love to highlight for people, and it's often overlooked and is underappreciated, that's the Rise Above the Flame skin. Once a day, you can use its special effect, which places an item in your inventory. Two of those items are really nice decor items. The Burning Feather increases HP of all units by 1%. That may not mean much to you at 1%, but over time, if you're diligent and you enact it every single day, you can upgrade this and get better and better and better as you collect more. I currently have a level five burning feather, so my skin gave me an extra five HP just for having that special effect. But wait, there's more. The other far more important decor item there is the Emerging Phoenix. At level one for this decor, it's gonna increase your attack 3%, and you get another 2% for every level that you upgrade. Now, I currently have mine at level four. Yes, the Emerging Phoenix is, is rarer to get. Um, but all in all, because of that level four, I'm getting another 9% attack thanks to that item. It also doesn't have bad stats as a main base skin if this is the one that you want to use for free-to-play players. Over time, the skin grows, and no other skin does that like this one. So it's stronger than what it looks like at first. With that said, again, not the most important skill-based skin. Now let's talk about the most important skill-based skins that you can get in game today. People will talk to you a lot about Nemesis and Ark. I know, I know, I know. But unless there's some minor miracle and we get another Transformer collaboration event, you're out of luck if you don't have it, okay? You might as well be asking to wake up one day on a bed made of solid gold by being fanned by the hottest personal servants in the kingdom. I think there's some hope, not for the servants part, but I think there's some hope that the developers are going to release similar effect skins over time. Now... Why do I think this? Because when they released the upgrade to Shatter Dome as a skin in the specific Rim event, it not only mimics the Ark skin, but develops, developers created this term called mutually exclusive skills, which means you can't use both Ark and it. They share a cooldown time. I think that this is critical insight that they accidentally gave us. They're telling us they plan on recycling certain special event-based skin effects and limiting stacking to prevent crazy effects over time. I kind of would like the stacking, but in any event, it's good hope all the same. So ignoring special events, number one to me is Acadia. It remains the best skin skill for me to get. For 30 minutes once a day, you can use Rallying Cry, which increases your march size by 10 whole units, okay? That's not too shabby for server versus server events and other special events. The next one is Atlantis. 
And that's an order of yumminess for me, number two, because it's gonna give you a 30% attack increase when you use that skill, and everyone around you, including you, is gonna get 30% HP increase. Nice teamwork, right? And that's gonna last you for 10 minutes. Oh, did I mention you can stack most skill effects? That's, that's pretty cool, right? So I bet now you're getting the picture of how wonderful skin skills can be when you use them properly. I, I try, you know, I'm working on it. Next up is Storm Factory. Its skill, Harsh Teleport, can be used three times a day, so it's a free teleport. But more importantly than that, when you teleport this way, you're going to get an additional 30% HP and 30% attack. If you're doing the math in your head, you're probably seeing some great temporary numbers at this stage, but I'm not done yet, okay? Shadow Dragon looks real cool, but its special effect, while pretty brief, it gets you 30% damage increase for three minutes. This is a part of the individual defense strategy. If you've ever seen how to do that, just like Acadia, Atlantis, and Storm Factory also are. They're really good in combination, okay? Void Matrix, I want to mention here because it's great during SVS type events and Terra Aurora and Eternal Lands. On the plus side of this skin, listen to me, you can get it for free. That's pretty nice, right? On the negative side, you rarely see it to grab outside of these events in the first place. I like the base effects better than the skill, but I've seen it used in strategy, so I don't want to leave it out. There's some pretty good coordination you can do with it. Oh, and for those free players that are concerned that you can't get enough to grab it in one single event, the coins, the currency types that you get in Terra Aurora and Eternal Lands, they don't expire, okay? Just save up and you'll get there. And if you move on a server that goes from Terra Aurora to Eternal Lands, you can convert the coins, okay? So you're fine, relax, just save up, you'll get there. It's free. Isn't that beautiful? After this group of skill-based skins, which you've ticked those off the list, you should look for skins that increase March. As a general rule, more March equals good, right? Sizzling Factory, Acadia again, Shadow Dragon again, Lucky Dragon Castle. These are all good choices. One I don't like to recommend for anyone other than whales is Hyperion. It's going to increase your March by six if you equip it. That's great. But listen, I just think it's an outdated skin just outdated. The other features of having it equipped are not keeping pace with some of the other newer skins, okay? Oh, and by the way, it's so ridiculously expensive, it costs more than three decor bundles in order to get it. You can get further buying decor bundles, especially when you take into account a fact that we all know the right heroes and the right order can seriously reduce the benefit of March size. So you're just going to waste your money, in my opinion, jumping on it unless you're a whale. If you don't see the skin types that I listed above, or if you have all of them, look for skins that can increase your training next. We're getting towards the very end of where it makes sense to me, okay? There are a number of skins I've seen for free that can increase your training speed, like the training base, eh, aptly named. I like to equip this to help rebuild from tough battles. These will save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache, especially when you're in things like Eternal Lands. There are also skins that increase the number of units you can keep in hangars, but this is a really expensive way to get it done. So I only recommend chasing these if you're free, uh, if they're free pretty much or relatively free and you have everything else or if you're a highly competitive player. Again, sometimes base skins are actually very cheap because of special events versus the normal way of 140 bucks to get one. As a reminder, new skins come out about once a month. So I can't keep up with the names in this video. And so instead of trying to do that, just use the strategy that I lay out over the names of the skins. After those skins types, you're getting into the world of highly competitive gameplay where small 10% changes matter. For most of us, when you get to that point, stop the addiction of buying the skins, okay? And switch to decor bundles, run away. Okay, just run away from the skins. For those of you that are highly competitive and need to keep going, just for funsies, look for skins that modify the following items by holding in stock in order. Damage increase, number one. Damage decrease, number two. Attack is number three. And last but not least is HP. Or if you just got to get them all like in Pokemon, go ahead and get them all. Why not? Have fun. Uh, just, just think it over, okay, if you want to spend time on getting base skins. Once you have your primary skin, the solid skin skills, they're all sitting there yours, and you're happy with your VIT and your training skins. Skins take a lot of effort for small returns of holding in stock. Stronger primary skins do not come out regularly, but you do need to keep your eye out for them all the same because they do hit. There are other items, for me, instead of skin choice boxes, that would help you out more if you don't already have them. 
So if you think I left out anything, please let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you're a first time watcher or you've been watching my channel for some time and the pain, the sheer pain of moving your finger to the subscribe button has been too much to overcome. Do me a solid and smush all the buttons to like, subscribe, and enable notifications, okay? It's super simple and it really helps me out a lot. And, and I'm sure if it hurt your finger so much you couldn't do it before and now's the time where you're just going to make the big jump, the big leap. Once you do it, I'm sure you're going to agree that it didn't hurt all that bad. And again, thank you for overcoming the obstacle. Thank you for watching. And until next time, Tubaverse, keep smushing your enemies and getting stronger in game.